Hey guys, a few years ago, I started creating a course to help people kickstart their business. But before we could finalize it, life just got in the way. So instead, I've decided to just release this free for all of you to watch and use. This video is an introduction to using Excel for accounting. Now, onto the video. Now it's essential to find a suitable accounting system to track your income, track your expenses, customers, tax, and reporting. Starting your business without an accounting system is like jumping on a plane without a pilot. You'll probably crash and burn. The accounting system can be something simple like using spreadsheets to track income and expenses. However, we strongly recommend investing in an accounting software early on, even if you're a sole trader. If you have a sound accounting system, it will save you time, help you make better decisions, and assist you in running your business. So let's get into it. So if you don't want to use accounting software and you just want to use the spreadsheet or just record your data manually, you can also do that as well. The main thing is that you need a business bank account first. So once you've got your business bank account um, and you've recorded your invoices and you send your invoices out to your clients, then the next step is that you need to record your expenses and your income on a monthly basis at least. I would not recommend you doing it every six months or three months. I actually think it's really important for you to, you know, do your bookkeeping and record your monthly expenses and income so you can track how much money you're actually physically making. So how you do that is it's quite easy. Let me just go and create the spreadsheet that you would use. So I'll open up Excel, open up a new book. Um, and this is what you need to do. You need to create two spreadsheets, um, two sheets. One that's going to be income, period. And always separate your periods from which financial year. So you're going to go July 2020 to 30 June 2021. Okay, so that's easy. And then what you need to do is because we're doing invoicing uh, with the income, we need to record the income data. And what's the most important for the income data? The income data you need to put is the date that you the, the, you received the income or you invoiced, um, the amount, and then with the description. Actually, let's start, let's start with the description. Start with the client first. Then the description, the net amount, the GST amount, and the gross amount. And then paid and method. That's the most important things that you would need in your situation when you do your bookkeeping. So this, this is just, if you guys don't want to use a accounting software, you can actually create your own. That's a good thing about this. And what you need to do now is create a table. So you go press control T and it creates this. My table has headers already. And then this is what it creates. Cool. Just open that up. Okay, so now this is where you go and put in the information um, of what money you've received. And then we do the exact same thing for expenses. So let's just create this one and call it income for now. And we do the exact same thing for expenses. Why I separate it into two spreadsheets? It's just easier to track how much expenses you receive for a particular period and how much expenses you paid for a particular period and how much income you received for a particular period. So, all right, so all I need to do is just go this, expenses, and then that's for that period. Then amount, um, you won't have client, you'll have, uh, uh, you would have um, supplier, or you could have um, biller. Cool. And then you can put in paid and payment method. So this is method means like, you know, how it was received or how it was paid. So did we pay through our credit card? Did we pay through our personal bank account? Did we pay through the business bank account? Same thing with income. Uh, did, we, did we receive it personally or did we receive it in cash? Did we pay it? Uh, did we receive it in our uh, business bank account? That's basically what this column is for. All right. So the next step is that how do I get this data? Where do I get it from? Same thing. All you need to do is get that data from the bank account. Um, so what you do is log on to your internet banking. I've already done that. And what I've done is I've exported the CSV file. They call it a comma separated values file. And that's just basically your bank statements in a spreadsheet format. And it looks like this. This is what it looks like. So you need, every bank has something like this. You can do this for every single bank. Um, so what I would recommend is 
you go and log on to your internet banking um, and then export your CSV file. If you're not sure on how to do that, Google it. So CBA shows you how to do that as well. So you can easily Google CBA CSV export and then you choose the dates that you want and you can export basically all the um, transactions into a spreadsheet format. And why I want you to do that is because this here will tell you what your income and expenses will be. So what your income and expenses will be is basically all the transactions you have in your bank account. So the next step after that is now you go control T and you change that. Then I've reordered this into deposits and income and highest to smallest. So now therefore it's just recording all the income that I have received in this bank, business bank account. So now you copy all these expenses, uh, this, this income into that spreadsheet that we're talking about. So and I've also got the dates. So just go and copy here. This is for income. And this is the gross amount. And then here is all the invoices and that's the description. And then here, this is all the... Yep, yeah. cool. All right, so that's in there. And these are all the expenses. So. And then you go and put in here, the description. And that's a gross amount. So now what you need to do is put in the dates as well. Put that in right now. And then do the same. Okay, this is not it. You're not done yet. What your next thing you need to do now is actually update this spreadsheet and reorder it as well because the order's incorrect. The order is highest to lowest. So what you need to do now is you need to put in who this person is, so who this company is that you're working for. Obviously this is X, Y, and Z, so easy. And this is Council uh, Council. And then my Sarah. whoever that person is and then this is rent and this is for abc p2y limited whoever the, whoever my landlord is and then go all the way down here insurance payments so basically what i'm trying to do is you record all the data uh, and, and insurance payments let's just say you know nrma or something like that okay the next step after that is um you need to create one more column for your for your expenses which is uh, type so this is important. Why are we, this is basically like rounded where we classify what type of expense it is. So this is software, obviously, and we can bring this down all the way down to here. And this is cancer, cancer council. Um, so this is donations or charity. And this is marketing and this is rent. Then it's important that when you do your bank transfers, you make sure that you put in the description properly in your bank transfers. If you don't do that, this is going to be hell when you do your bookkeeping. So it's really important that you do that. So just make sure that you have a good habit. Okay, so now that um, I've copied all the bank transactions into this spreadsheet, I've realized that some of these transactions are actually personal and shouldn't be in here. So we should delete it. That's what we just need to do. So I'm going to get rid of this spreadsheet. It's not important anymore because I've copied all the data into our um, bookkeeping spreadsheet. Okay, the next step now is to delete this. Delete all your personal transactions in here. You don't need to have this. You got the gross amount. The next step is to take out the GST. So work out which of these expenses have GST on it. Luckily for us, I make counting and I can easily work out which ones have GST on it. This one here does not have GST on it. So just remember it's divided by 11 on the gross amount. So if whatever money that you spent, uh, and that um, amount that you spent on is the total amount, including GST. You have to divide it by 11 to work out what the GST is. So it's not divided by 10, just know that. So, all right, cool. I know that Cancer Council doesn't have GST. And we know that Sarah does not have GST as well because we've checked the invoices. So therefore, these ones are the ones that have GST on it. And we just get that. And the net amount will obviously be then this minus this. And that is it, guys. So that's how you work out your 
how you do your bookkeeping for your expenses and you do the exact same thing for your uh, income. So obviously there might be some deposits that are not related to um, income. So I had to delete this, for example, this is payback, this is a transfer, contributions are also not invoices. So we know that these are all invoices. You've got to put in the client data name um, and then you also divide this by 11. And then you got the same thing and then you got the net amount which is this minus this cool all right so that's how you do your bookkeeping if you don't use a canon software and this is how you get all your data in and when it comes to doing your basses now you have to reorder this oldest and newest and then reorder this oldest and newest okay so let's try to do our business activity statement and work out you know what is our bass gonna be for April to June 2020 all right so we know that our expenses for April to June is gonna be this one here this one here this one here because it's a, we've already worked out what the totals are so we can do a sum if we want to but we can just work it out like it so that's our GST so this is what we call 1b which is also GST on ex purchases. This is what we call G11, but it doesn't show up anymore. So you don't actually need to put this on there, but I just, this is your total purchases. I just record that anyway for the quarter. Okay, and then we've got to do the same thing for our um, income. So unfortunately we only actually invoiced once. So that's easy. So your, your total sales is basically this and then your GST is this amount here because that's the only payment that was uh, invoice that you've received for May. Don't forget you have to fill this part out. I'm not going to fill that out because that's that's obviously like we know that it's all paid because that came from the bank account. Yeah, so that's your total sales and that's what your we call it one a uh, G, G1 and then your one eight and this is how you fill out the business business activity statement now so go into business activity statement click on the period so this is april to june and because this has been lodged i'm just going to show you how it, how we fill it out if it was revised so we'll put in one one and zero and then the gst is one thousand dollars that's it and then save it mm -hmm. And that's how you do your business security statement. And then you got this amount only. So that's how you do it manually. If you don't want to use the accounting software, you don't need to. You can just use a spreadsheet to record your income and expenses and do your best. Now you just need to save this, save this as a file and save it all. And then you do the exact same thing for either the next quarter um, or you do it for the full, uh, you add on to this, um, this spreadsheet. So you can record all your income and expenses for the whole year. Cool. All right, guys, that's how you do it.